Hey there, community. Welcome to the Providence Podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. And I hope you feel welcome to connect with us. You can visit our website and sign up for our newsletter to receive this delicious goodness in your inbox every Friday. And on our website, you can also find reflections, meditations, events, pictures, and even playlists to enhance your prayer. You can also stay connected through Facebook and Instagram. So give us a like and come with us on the journey. I hope this journey of the Advent season has been a blessed one for you. So let's get started with our reflection. We'll begin with a little scripture and then go from there. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I love this reading from Philippians that tells me to have no anxiety at all, but instead to rejoice and allow the peace of God to guard my mind and heart. That's easier said than done, though. Especially lately, it seems like anxiety has taken up guard duty in my mind and heart, and peace and joy are having a hard time getting in. So the question I'm asking God as I pray with this reading is this. How can I turn this around so that peace is on guard and anxiety is standing outside? Anxiety is a frequent visitor for me. And so it's something I regularly bring to reflection and prayer. My community has a prayer called the Act of Abandonment to Divine Providence. And a line of it says to God, As I rely entirely upon you and expect all from your goodness, I will not give myself up to any useless anxiety. When I pray this prayer, I often wonder what useless anxiety might be and whether or not there's such a thing as useful anxiety. As I think about it, Yeah, I think there is such a thing as useful anxiety. Anxiety is a warning bell that can protect me from a legitimate threat. A signal about real danger is certainly useful because it keeps me safe. The problem is when this response kicks up and there's no real danger. And that's what's useless anxiety at least in my way of thinking. It's a fear response in my heart, in my mind, in my body, when there's actually no threat at all. I once heard that anxiety is a form of self-protection gone awry. Even when there's no threat, something in me tells me I'm unsafe and screams at me to run to safety or freeze or fight. I've heard a similar thing about worry, anxiety's calmer but persistent sidekick. The act of worrying gives the mind something to do. If I worry through all possible scenarios, I'll protect myself because I'll be prepared for what might happen. In reality, though, I can't really prepare myself, and often there's nothing bad that's actually coming. Also, worry and anxiety are, oh, they're hard on me. As I spin through the details of each possible situation, I stir up all the feelings associated with all the things that could possibly happen. 
my mind doesn't distinguish between real or perceived emotions, so I feel them for real and not as hypotheticals. When I give myself up to useless anxiety in this way, it becomes a tunnel vision, and it's difficult to notice peace or joy. So what do I do with this? Knowing what's happening doesn't necessarily eradicate anxiety, but, I mean, it's a little endearing that my mind is trying to take care of me. Thank you, self. Anxiety may be trying to tell me something, too. It could be an invitation to stop and be with something that's making me feel unsafe. It could be an invitation to honor that feeling rather than try and push it away. And that's not the same as giving myself over to it. In fact, if I simply acknowledge it, I'm probably less likely to be consumed by it. I hear an invitation not only to self-care, but opening to God's care, too. Relying on God and expecting all from God's goodness. In our reading from Philippians, there's some good advice about that. It says, Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Make your requests known to God. I wonder if my useless anxiety self-protection mechanism amps itself up when I try to carry everything myself. What would happen if I were to tell God about the things that make me anxious? This makes me think back to a time when I was in grad school, which was a time in my life when I was just stressed out and anxious a lot. And I spent a lot of nights lying awake, worrying about papers to write and readings to do. So there was one night that I eventually got up out of bed after worrying about a particular paper. And I wrote down each thing I was worried about on a little piece of paper. Then I put each piece of paper in a little silver heart-shaped box. And I said to God, look... You're going to have to take and hold all these things because I just can't anymore. Then I put the lid on the box, put the box down, got back in bed, and slept the rest of the night. In the morning, all the things I was worried about may still have been there, but the intensity of it all was gentled. So I guess you could say in a bossy and pretty desperate way, I made my requests known to God, and I do think God heard them. I trust that, as I make all my requests known to God, God hears them. Also, I trust that, although I might struggle with it, God loves the part of me that's anxious, as God loves all of me. Maybe, maybe... I can learn to love and accept it too. A few months ago, I read a book by Sarah Wilson called First We Make the Beast Beautiful, A New Journey Through Anxiety. One of the most helpful things about this book was simply the invitation to befriend this thing that will likely always be a part of me. For whatever reason, life experience, my innate personality, or some kind of gift from God that I don't understand yet. There's something in me that worries. Can I just allow it to be there, but also not be in charge? Like, can I let it just come to the party as a guest, but not hire it as a bouncer? I would rather have the peace of God to guard my heart and mind, for sure. Anxiety will likely not stay outside, but God helps me to hold all these things, peace, joy, anxiety, too. In fact, despite anxiety, when I look for joy, I tend to find it. 
And maybe peace is not irreconcilable with anxiety either. Maybe peace, like hope, is a gift from God. Perhaps it's not so much about erasing worry as it is about letting worry be there while also trusting that God is with me. This reading from Philippians reassures me that God is near. Even as I'm worrying, there's something in me that can trust that since God is near, God is also taking good care of me. In whatever scenario plays out at any given time, things will be okay. God is near. Allowing God's peace to guard my heart and mind is beyond my understanding for sure. It's something I really need God's help with. Thankfully, God is ready and willing to offer this help. God is near, and the peace of God will guard us, even when we feel anxious. So let's pray this reading together as a blessing for all of us. May we rejoice in God always. May our kindness be known to all. May we trust that God is near. May we have no anxiety at all, but in everything, may we make our requests known to God. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And let's spend some time reflecting a little more deeply. Do you ever struggle with anxiety? What kinds of things do you worry about? How is God with you when you feel worried? Can you hold both anxiety and joy? Can you find a sense of peace, even in uncertainty? How is God with you right now? When God is near, how do you know? What requests do you have for God right now? Let's just take a moment and make those requests to God. Whether they're prayers of petition or prayers of thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to connect with God's Space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky as well. A 
as you enter this week, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you. And may we all take good care of each other. Peace.